All right, welcome to Teachers Teach New Teachers um, on November 29th. And um, got some, a few friends and maybe some others are coming here. Welcome everybody. Um, let's, um, let's go around and uh, do quick introductions. And um, I, specifically, I've invited you here to think about a, an AI assistant. And then there are other things we can be thinking about because everybody's doing different um, AI work here. I think everybody is. Um, so um, we'll get into it a little bit. And um, there are other examples we can think about. So lots of things on the table. But um, when you introduce yourself, just say quickly what you think of when you think of an AI assistant, which is a term we haven't used before. Chris Sloan, you're first. Hi. Um, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, when I think of an AI assistant, um, well, the way I was thinking of it today was a way to have more me's in the classroom uh, to help students with their writing at the sentence level. Oh, cool. Hi, Bob. Welcome, welcome. You want to just move off Rollin there, he, but that's okay. There you go. Jill, Jill introduce, introductions, please. Did you say Jill? Yeah, I did. Yeah, sorry. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Jill Sadronsky. I teach at William Anna Middle School in Basking Ridge, New Jersey. I, I also teach at Drew University, pre-service teachers. I, when I think of AI, I think about how to stretch my students' thinking, reading and writing wise. Kind of like Chris said, more me's, so that um, I have. A, I, I think about them as a true thinking partner. How can they help them think more deeply about their writing and their reading? Bob, we'll, we'll catch up with you in a second. Nick. Welcome. Uh, Nick Kuyos, I'm from New York. I'm just outside New York City, um, and I was a department chair at a middle school, high school there for 33 years. And when I think of AI thinking partner, I think of someone that can help me take care of my simple tasks. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even pull it off. I tried. And so Paul and I have been doing some really interesting deep work about how to use AI to evaluate student writing. So that's really the focus for us. Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Cantrell. I'm an avatar tonight because I can't get my camera on for some reason. Um, but I work for the National Writing Project and learned um, I've been thinking about digital tools and technologies and the implications of them for many years alongside Chris and Paul. <laughs> so, and many of you. Uh, so, um, and I'm right now in, usually in Philadelphia, but right now I'm in Berkeley, California. Oh, you're close. <laughs> Go ahead, Hi. Bob, introductions. Hi, Bob Montgomery. I work uh, mostly in adult professional learning for West Ed. I'm a former teacher and I am interested in uh, self-directed AI pedagogy, um, leveraging AI partners to support student agency and creating flows around learners that really increase their their agency and their own learning. Somebody write that down. That's <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Please stop. laughs> That's great. You're recording. Rollin. Um, Rollin here from Philadelphia. I teach ninth graders. And when I think of AI, I think of um, students having fun, just <laughs> asking questions that they want without intimidation and guilt, just to have fun. Wow. That's nice. I like that. <laughs> Welcome. That's on. great. Yeah, thank you. For, yeah. Cool. David, introduction. Uh, my name is David Cole, uh, Christine, I'm in Berkeley too. So welcome to California. Um, I'm a former uh, teacher writer who spent a lot of time in education, technology and literacy work and have benefited greatly from uh, working with and learning from the writing project. And this is just one more example of that kind of activity. 
So I've been joining these calls for a little while. Thanks to Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're in. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, so I'm Paul Allison. I've been messing with this stuff um, for a year now. Where you know, ChatGPT was released about a year ago. So just to say, <laughs> hasn't been long. Um, so, uh, and, and by the way, I wasn't, maybe wasn't clear, but I do want to talk about um, an assistant, which is a little different than we've uh, talked about before. And it was something that David did that made me think about doing this and then some working with some Agile students um, as well. And so wh what I want to propose is that you go to a different tab and log into now comment as as I'm babbling here. Um, one of the things that we have thought about in the months that we've been doing this is um, we spent about two months, for example, working with giving um, feedback to a student who is writing a college admissions essay. And we have about 12 that we need to sort of codify somehow. But um, GPT, we're calling them GPT now, GPT Thinking Partners, um, for looking at your writing and giving you feedback on your writing. And Chris, you did a lot of work with your students for some work to test that stuff out. Mm. Um, we've also, we then, we've also used it with literature and thinking about and um, current event stuff. So using Thinking Partners for um, text that you're reading are two kind of distinct things um, worth thinking about and you know which is more effective how. I want to propose tonight a third way, which is more like most people use chat GPT, which is you go to you go to a, the, the page, you ask a question, you're gonna then choose a thinking partner. The thinking partner is going to give you feedback, and then you're going to um, have a dialogue, continue dialogue with that with that partner. All right. Um, the, does that distinction? Do those distinctions make some sense, or what are you thinking about when I say all that? Now I'll try to start sharing the screen. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Lots. Yeah, what? <laughs> I'm sure there was a lot there. And I was trying to figure out the differences between the AI assistant and the two things you were just describing. So you go ahead and keep talking and, and I'll pick it up, I'm sure. Okay. Um, you want to, Paul, you want to try just a, an elevator version of that, st of what you said? Like, what, what, how would you state the difference of the new wrinkle in, in short, concise? Um, terms. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Let me see. I, I was going to maybe present and and just yeah, show you. So do that. Feel free, either way, I just so here's here's I, like I have I have a link on my phone now. Right, I hit, I hit the link. I I I then I I go in and say, hey, there are a lot of people with different thing different ideas coming tonight. Um, Tell me what I should do. You know, I mean, what what I should think about. I asked that. I, I used um, Terry Elliott's um, improvisational um, partner. Um, it gave me a sort of response that said, "Do an icebreaker first. It sort of gave me some advice about how to how to proceed. Um, right. So, um, and and as I'm using this, I I'm using it kind of more. There's no text involved. There you go. <laughs> There's there's neat, there's no text except my own question or whatever text I put in, right? That so that would sense. be that would be a difference. Yeah, so it's not. I don't, I don't know why I made that so hard. Not helping <laughs> me with my writing so much. It's not helping me with my reading so much. It's like a personal assistant. Yeah, it sounds like a research assistant, right? Or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not sure it's going to work. <laughs> um, this is an experiment, as always. Um, but I'd like you all to set one up, right? So on on the front page of now comment are the instructions, but I'm going to try it at my screen, and something is acting a little different than it has in the past. But um, I'll figure this out. 
Um, if I go there, am I presenting that, but it's on an angle? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Is that good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll go through and do this and show you how to set it up. Um, so here's the idea. We're going to, and, and then we are going to get to um, some of the other examples of, of people here in the room who are working on stuff here. But the idea is that you're logged in to now comment. You go to my library. And I, I'm suggesting you do this right now so you can kind of see how it works. And then I'll show you the one I've been messing with for a few days. Um, when you go to my library on the right side, you'll go down, you'll find my groups, and you'll go to create a group. You're basically creating a group where you're going to collect um, your chats with uh, the GPT thinking partners. OK? Did it, did it switch to a new tab? I can't see what I'm showing. OK. Yeah, you're good. OK, thanks. So in the, in the name, put in um, your name. So Bob's GPT, and that's all you need, because it's going to add the word discussions. You can decide if you want it public or private, um, and then hit save, and you are good. I'll show you the next steps after that. Paul, can you just tell me one more time? You go into my library, and then what do you hit? Down here on the right side, create group. Did you see it? I don't know why I don't. Um, Are you logged in? I am logged in. Uh, my, group, my group's on the right side. Okay. Then, you may have a bunch of them. Um, and then you'll All find right, my, my groups. My, my groups and then create let me just see create group there's a button for it right there oh i see down there okay thank you okay so we go and create a group paul yeah yeah that's right yeah it's that okay. easy um and i'm going to try to show you my example here And this group is particular to this exercise you're guiding us through, yes? That's right. All right. Um, I'm going to show you what mine looks like, um, I hope. My most recent one on here. All right. So I've started three conversations. You can hit start a conversation. Um, do that once you get to oh did you i should i should start from the group right you need to go down to where it says join the discussions so you just name your group you don't have to put anything in the notes no yep just name the group keep it simple i think so we have to start the discussion first before we can join the discussion there's no option join the discussion there, there's a button that says join the discussions. Do you see that button? I only see start discussion, start a new discussion in the group that oh, I yes. just created. Yes, that's right. You went to join discussions already. And now you want to start a conversation. That's right. Start a discussion. Okay. There are instructions, which, you know, I, I wrote them fast last night, I, and I'm sort of testing them out here with you. Um, so start a discussion and my dis and keep it very simple because once you get to the GPTs, they will read everything above. So um, I wanted to have a conversation about introducing personal AI assistance. And then I'll show you the one new GPTs. So I wanted to create a new GPT for a teacher in Philadelphia. Um, and um, so he wanted one that would look at topic sentences and all right, and transition sentences. So I just titled it. I just created a conversation called New GBTs. Then I, then I went and I hit Reply with AI. I chose the Supportive English Teacher Mentor. And I asked the question, 
I'm wondering how you give writers feedback on the topic and transition sentences, right? And then, so I got that answer back. I'm going quickly here. I'll, I'll slow down and see where you are. Then I asked, then I further asked, wait, can you say more about how it's not a formula and it's, you know, how, what are the guiding principles? So you can see I have an ongoing conversation with this supportive English teacher. And then at some point, I just hit reply, not reply with AI, and I put in the prompt that this supportive English teacher helped me think about. Does that make some sense, how this is working? So is there a certain AI that we have to choose? No. Um, I can suggest some. I can show you um, some others that I've thought about. Um, uh, here's another one here. Um, but yeah, that's always a good question. So here's, let me ask you back, what, or everyone, let's sort of round table, go around. What, what, um, what do you, what's your, just your conversation that you're starting? <clears throat> I took the wicked problem coach as my thinking partner and uh -huh. the question or statement that I entered is how can I use AI to coach me as I, when I have questions about how to design a learning journey for colleagues on project, an effective project management. Oh, cool. So the, the key here is that you want to read what you got and then app and use, use either the same one or a different one and keep the dialogue going for a while, right? Um, and Roland, if if you have no other in mind, um, the, the supportive English teacher is a good one. Um, an improvisational teammate is also a good one. The research teammate might be helpful depending on what you're doing. There's no way to see what each thinking partner is comprised of or defined by, is there? Yeah, when you scroll across it, a little pop-up okay. box should appear. Okay. Um, it's it, That's temporary. But then when you click on it, the whole thing appears on the right side. Oh, yeah, that's the prompt. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else with questions, thoughts, ideas of what you're doing? Um, I'm going to keep talking and uh, working with um, a teacher in Philadelphia again, uh, Jeffrey. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, we were talking about what a tea party is. I looked, I Googled what a tea party is, got this long description here. I, I put it into a conversation, right? I created a conversation. I put the long description in and there's the link to it. And then I, then I just used the summarizer tool. And I said, can you give me a lesson plan for an 11th grade class, right? Which Jeff class is. And the summarizer tool gave a really quite decent lesson plan. And I sent that to Jeffrey and said, hey, rather than my trying to explain this to you, look through this and see if this helps. Paul? Yes. What, what's the difference between having a wonderful catalog of thinking partners and their prompts and simply scrolling through, finding a thinking partner, and then pasting that information into chat GPT? Because... Right. Because you don't, because when you do that, you have, you're going through the chat GPT mind yeah. thing, right. which, which we don't have to do. Right. <laughs> at least, at least in my, so I, I think you end up wrestling with chat GPT then to try to make it do something. This is kind of a more pure way to, to make it do what you want it to do. Is that pure. a fair? 
But what do you mean by pure? Because it's not going through the chat GPT um, mechanism. So we're using the same model. We're using Turbo 4, right? right. And it, we're using the engine. But instead of chat GPT, we're saying, hey, use this chat, use this GPT in place of chat GPT. Because right? it's safer, more no. secure, and, and free? No, it is all of that. <laughs> but but more like it gives you what you want instead of this generalized corporate speech that you get back from ChatGPT. Now, I, there are people who are really, really good at ChatGPT, and you know, but in my view, this is a, an easier way to get there. Does that make sense? Paul, can you explain that again? I'm, I, I get that the learning, the, the long list of learning partners that have been developed over the past few months sort of reflects a whole bunch of interesting lenses or filters. Right. Um, and by setting up this, by starting a conversation and framing it this way, are we needing to prompt or orient the AI with a sufficient body of information so that's its framework that it uses to go out and ping the tokens and the and and the and the databases that it's talking through or I'm, I'm puzzled I get what you're saying I think but I, I want to make sure I understand it yeah how, and how is this workflow not not how is this workflow made smarter as opposed to just going and picking off a, a, a learning partner as Bob was describing it I'm still not clear Maybe maybe you can keep going, Paul. Instead of us trying to do it ourselves, maybe you can show us your, how you would use it, and we can kind of get our head around the value that yeah. I think you're seeing. Okay. So, everyone, everyone sort of gets some. Let me try one more time. <laughs> so we we. We have an LL, a large language model. It goes, it goes and creates these engines and through various um, training that they do. Um, and then we adopt the model or the engine. We've, we've adopted, as I keep saying, Turbo 4.0 at this point. Um, and that's what ChatGPT is using also, right? But before it gets to ChatGPT, we step in and say, don't go to ChatGPT, go to our thinking partners instead. And our thinking, and, and so it, it doesn't, it doesn't um, get pol uh, polluted, maybe an unfair word here, but it doesn't get polluted by the corporate generic sort of way uh, ChatGPT thinks. It just gets shaped by our our thinking partners instead, right? Does that make sense? I always sense? think of it as like, Paul, the way I keep trying to explain to my students is like, we put a layer, like a, a screen over it, like a filter over, you know, ChatGPT so that it, and now that filter is going to teach it a little bit better to get us more directed feedback. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oops. So, any feedback on what you're doing so far here and what you've come up with? Or yeah, uh, I'm, I'm struggling, Paul. I can't. I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't understand what what we're what we're driving at here. Like, I don't. I can't see the end game. Maybe, and I'm just like, are we? Yeah. I, I'm I'm lost. I have to confess. Okay. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. So what I'm, I'm suggesting in the same spot yeah. too. I'm not. I'm fiddling, and I'm not knowing what the the purpose is right now, or of this other thing that we're doing on now. Comment with this. Yeah. Let me try to find other comments or thoughts, and let me try to find something here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll talk yeah, about what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. So I used um, Nick's and Paul's um, sentence beginnings um, mentor with some students today, and it was a bit rushed. So 
um, I gave them a lot of time to write. And then the last probably 10 minutes, um, they, they put, they copied their, um, an essay they're writing about, um, Salt Lake city. There's, there's this talk about having widening the interstate, you know, to increase, you know, commuter time or whatever. And so, you know, it's, it's, um, complex kind of issue because it's going through kind of wetlands and, um, you know, does more lanes improve, uh, commuter life anyway, or does it just add more cars on the road? So there's stuff like that. So I had them, um, <clears throat> that was one of the topics they were writing about. So they put their essays into now comment and I, um, had them, we've been working on, or at least I've been telling them about like, Hey, there's this thing called participial phrases that writers don't often use, or if you use them, you're using them subconsciously probably, or maybe consciously. Uh, and then like sentence variety too. So, um, so then I had them pump it into the thinking partner and, um, it was, it was a little rush. So like, I think they got some good stuff, but then the bell rang. Um, <laughs> And so, um, and I think they saved them all as, they didn't make them public, so I can't see them right now. I have a feeling that, you know, some of it was was helpful, but I, I was a little bit quick at the end there. But what I'm doing right now then uh, to answer Paul's question a little bit is um, kind of going through that um, thing about talking to the GPT about, okay, give me reasons why someone would want to use participials in their writing. And so then, um, so I got some stuff back, which is great, you know? Um, and what I was gonna do was another experiment I had them do was try to tell a story with in just simple sentences. And so I was gonna have them, and we did this without AI, try to combine it, you know, like what's, a, you know, try to combine these with a compound sentence, that kind of thing. Um, and so, um, I didn't get to putting that into the, uh, thinking partner, but that's what I'm doing right now is like, um, I'm, I'm saying to the GPT, why would somebody want to use participial phrases? And it gave me, um, things like, well, you could sharpen imagery, you could condense the narrative and you could show causality. So the next step I was going to do was like, okay, here are a bunch of simple sentences. Give me an example of where combining these might sharpen imagery. So I was kind of um, going down that path with what we're doing right now. Mm, that's great. Now, and and you could do that on ChatGPT. I and and I haven't done the research, but it's it's my opinion at least, <laughs> and we should do the research that if you did that, you wouldn't get as as quality or you wouldn't get as specific and um, carefully thought through response that you're getting because of of what we've set up here, right? So, um, yeah, I thought it was pretty yeah. good. I mean, what I got, um, mm -hmm. and I may be on a well, browser. Is there? I guess I was also wondering if there's just like a workflow issue that you're trying to address here. I mean, I don't know what you're doing with Jeffrey, but like that you don't. Like instead of kids jumping around from now comment back to GPT and all that, that it would be sort of integrated here. Is that not part of what's happening? That's fair. Um, yes. Um, so maybe I'll show a couple of other examples, and um, you can. Oh, be good. Which uh, which I'm going to try to present. Yep. Here. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Keep asking I'll, as uh, as I do this. I'm just I'm. Still trying to get my head around what's different about this exercise than just picking off one of the learning partners that we'd set up, with, which had the same sort of intention, like, you know, a learning partner that does a certain thing is in the list. Are, is, is this exercise designed to curate and frame up a, lear a learning partner bio and the lenses mm -hmm. that it should use more thoroughly than... No, 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 I, I don't I'm, think I'm sorry, so. So let me use your, let me use your example. Um, so Dave... And and I, I I put this in, but David, you went to ChatGPT, right? Oh sure, yeah. Oh this thing, yeah. All right. Right. Okay. And yeah. you asked this question. <laughs> Do you want? It's it's it gets pretty 
um, detailed here pretty fast. But instead of going to ChatGPT to ask this question, I pulled David's question and just asked his, he had created this NLP LLM expert, right? And you you got different answers here than you did in ChatGPT, mm. right? And you attribute that to what? I attribute that to it's not going through ChatGPT, it's just going through your thinking partner. And, and well, it's going through your thinking. So you're basically enhance. I still, if you took your thinking partner with you into chat GPT, what's the difference? You, you, you refer to this corporate language or there's, there's some sort of layer. Then, of then you, then you have two things. You have chat GP and your thinking partner and it, it's combining those and you don't have to. Hmm. Yeah, I see. Right. And yet, at the same time, our thinking partners are referencing the corpus of information that ChatGPT uses. Yeah, right? it's the same. that's right. That's, that's the same. So what is ChatGPT is the question. It's a user interface that is designed, you know, so they've designed that user interface. We've designed these user interfaces. Well, it has to be more than an interface if it's, if it's substantive. Yeah. Interface. Yeah. yeah. Paul, so I want to pick, can I pick up on a good research was, question? Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. But just oh, picking, yeah. Up, picking up on what Christina was saying, I mean, to the extent that this looks like a workflow that, yeah, that, um, that, that gives students a way to stay inside a certain workspace together. Chris, yeah. you're doing this That's a lot, big. obviously. Um, and if this prompts students to develop their own, you know, AI, um, not mentor exactly, but thinking partner or feedback friend, or I'm trying to pick the right noun. Yeah. And they build up that bio and they ask that question, their questions through this interface where they're building up their own thinking partners as a frame. That makes a lot of sense in that regard, as opposed to bouncing out into yeah. a corporate site. And yeah, no doubt. I mean, every, I think every time we ask a question of the AI, it's coming back with a some measured some measure of random responses that differentiate from the last one i think um but if what if the thing information we create in the in the in the chat gpt detail and you can see this in ethan mollick's examples so some, i mean the single space prompts he is sharing are really rich huge and robust right yeah and to the extent but one i, I want to argue with him that he doesn't have to go to chat gpt which you know I yeah yeah no I, I, he yeah, wouldn't yeah. And i'm just trying to understand yeah yeah. Um, is the is there a qualitative difference in the in the in the in the level of response that happens when one asks the question through a now common interface versus a ChatGPT interface? It's just a it's a just researcher a researcher would have to figure that out. <laughs> right. My right. assumption is there is, but I'm not sure. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yep. So working with that assumption. I mean, the, um, the last last thing I want to say is that please. I mean, now common is a is a is a classroom, a student centered interface, and in that regard, it's it sort of sets certain expectations and yeah. certain um, routines that are hugely valuable, as opposed to just kids pinging off left and right yeah. into uh, consumer web pages, which yeah. we're all habituated to. So, to the extent there, yeah, makes a lot of and, sense. Okay. And and remember, I, I don't know what happened what happened to my camera here but um remember <laughs> that the um the uh the, the, they you students and others can create their own thinking partners to work at work, work within this interface as well right? that's yeah. what we're thinking about um can i dovetail I, into that I, I, because yes they, david always inspires me i don't <laughs> so so the i think the difference is that with now comment we can train the thinking partners based on criteria that we vetted. And when we don't do that, we get whatever we get, I, I, you know? And so even Chris's suggestion about the use of sentence beginnings, if you unpack that on a, on a deeper level, there's probably 10 different types of sentence beginnings that are important that students use. So participles are one, but infinitives and, and articles and so having the capacity to feed into the now comment that level of information based on expertise is the difference that's the difference so when i just asked 
general questions to AI, I get general information back. When I give that specific training to it, the what it produces is astounding to me personally. So Paul and I did an experiment with syntax. And when I taught, well, I didn't teach it, but I explained what I felt about syntax that was important about the use of simple compound, compact, complex, and compound, complex sentences. When I explained to it that I wanted a variety of these used in a very specific way, the feedback that it provided was remarkable as opposed to just asking a general question. So the analogy I always make is it's like using Google Docs. I, mean, I can ask Google Docs or Grammarly to give me generic information about how to improve my writing and it will do so. But you know, even the use of the term topic sentence for me, topic sentence for a student oftentimes is confusing because they don't really know, what do you mean the topic of my essay or the topic of the paragraph? It becomes a little bit confusing for them. And so the more we define with specificity, the levels of understanding, which we can do with now comment, and I can't do that with chat GPT. And that's why I'm so enamored with, with now comment because I can tell it more information about that. Does that make any sense? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to suggest that the it difference, does. yeah. It does, Nick, but, but the thinking partners are portable. You can take the same content that is defined in now comment and paste it into chat GPT before you ask your simple question and in theory, get the same thing. Well, right, but so in theory, but in practice, I, I, you should try that. We should try that. I'll try it. A couple, I'll, I'll make a couple examples. I don't think you get the same thing. I think you're then mixing the vanilla with the, uh, the quality stuff. Right. And so Bob, and, to address right. Bob's point. So now the difference would be for a student of mine, okay, they would have to have the intuitive understanding of syntax yeah. to be able to even paste that in there. Yeah. As opposed to a now comment, I'm so, doing that. Yeah, I, I understand the condition. Yeah, the convenience. Yeah, there's lot, all the arguments are great in terms of convenience, interface, cost, safety. Uh, you know, all of that I get. I'm just trying to figure out what the substantive, you know, differences are, and, and that's that's all. But I get all the all the. So no, I, a big... I only have a guess on that. Yeah. So, uh, can I can I show one more example, um, just very quickly, um, because it gets to workload a little bit. Um, I, we made an August Wilson simulator, right? Um, based on uh, several interviews that he gave um, because uh, Jeffrey's students were re were reading Joe Turner's Come and Gone, right? So um, I, I just started this off. I'd like to talk to August Wilson about this. Um, I decided just finish your play. Uh, Wilson responds. We have it kind of set up to say, you know, here are the next three things I could talk about, right? It then, it continues. I say, I'm interested in music. It continues, and then Wilson talks about how he uses music to write his play. I then say, oh, I'm particularly interested in some of the spirituality, right? So I, I'm kind of, I'm continuing an on a dialogue with the author here with no text involved, right? So that's the idea here um, that we can play with. Um, one more quick example. Um, sorry. Uh, um, I'm trying to write about all this, right? So uh, for Chris Sloan's kids who are reading um, Henrietta Lacks, right? Immortal Life, the Immortal Life of Henry Lacks, Henrietta Lacks. Um, we created a sclut simulator. I don't even know, Chris, you know that. We have that. But, right? Um, so Re Rebecca Sclut can, right? So it seemed to me that what I was trying to do I had like a personal thing, a scientific thing, and a group. Anyway, it seemed like she talked about braiding and, and how braiding was part of how she wrote, in, um, mm -hmm. in, right? Yeah. Um, and so I say, hey, I'm starting a project that wants to braid some things together. Can you give me some ideas about how you wrote? And she does here, right? And then I say, that's great. I like those ideas. And so it's, it's a, a thinking partner that helps me kind of push forward. At some point, I got tired of her. 
and just went to the supportive English teacher and said, can you help me get started here? I, I kind of understand what she wants me to do, but I need some help, right? So again, it's, it's kind of a way to, without a text involved, have a conversation with these thinking partners and, and develop something. You can do the same thing on ChatGPT, and I think people do. What I'm wondering is, you know, if we can experiment with doing it here and see what the difference is and so forth. Well, shall, shall we stop that and, and get to a couple of examples? Um, and I want to, um, I'm going to stop. Well, while we're on your screen, yeah, Paul, can I ask yeah. a question? Um, is there a limit to how much, like when I look at the, you know, when I'm uh, interacting with my own GPT now, and I get the box, when I say reply with AI, there's this box that says question or statement. And that's limited limit. to, to that's certain. Limited. That's limited to 255 character, or not characters, okay. words, yeah. And then what is the note about the reader or the thinking partner? Could I add more information there or what? What's Absolutely, that? yes, you can. And that's okay. that's unlimited, yeah. Okay. So, for example, before we move on, I I was okay. going to say, uh, and I did, I set it up where it's like, hey, so now can you help me? Uh, I have 10 simple sentences, and I was wondering if you could show me or give me some advice on how to combine some of those to sharpen my imagery. And so it was too much for the top box, but I could do that in the um, the... You could also you could also put it in a reply, just a reply without the AI, oh, and okay. then and then ask AI because it re, it reads oh. everything that's above it as well. Okay, okay, and so, yeah. Okay, Rollin, I dragged you in here. Sorry, I do I do want you to kind of play here, but can you talk about what your students have been doing? They've been reading the Poet X, and um, using AI, and you're muted right now. Okay, so let me center. Oops. So we started with the, the Poet X. Before that, I introduced the No More Elegies just to get them to write their poem first. So Paul helped me also with No More Elegies. And the students wrote their own poem. And then we they commented on each other. And then um, we read the Poet X. Um, Paul, do you want me to? Um, I think I can show. I, I just found one. I'll show one. Mm -hmm. um, so, Paul it. created this figurative language AI or yeah. where they can ask. We're, we're using the word GPT. Yeah, fine. But either okay. way, it's fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> okay, okay. So, and then I so, think my students oh, are I'll, having I'll, fun. I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of his last name here. Sorry about that. It's okay. It, it's because it's on a private mm -hmm. page. Okay, so this is his poem. Mm -hmm. And and over here is his, what he gets back about the figurative language, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So <laughs> it's funny because the students are saying, okay, how come we always use this? Oh, the AI is always using evoke. Like, you know, they, they <laughs> certain language that... Um, mm -hmm they made fun of and I, I thought that was uh it was fun because they you know they share the responses to each other and then they comment and they respond to to the gpt so worth noting the um the other the students are responding to his poem as well right mm -hmm. and then yes. ai jumps in here with the response so i was a little worried that ai would overwhelm the student's response but it both on the poetry and on the um, the literature, it doesn't seem to be happening, right? They say they no. seem talk more. What you, yeah. So it so it it um it was really fun to see them responding to each other. I just I don't even hover. I just let them go. They do this at home, and they don't do this in the classroom at all. So um, and then we focus on the book, and then. Paul divided the book into um, five sections and they had to use AI when they're interacting with the text. 
And I think that is also uh, helping them prepare for, like, um, we're having a seminar and we're having a, um, we're having tests. So it's just, you know, for me, it's just another way of um, changing some ways that students interact with the text. Instead of just reading it on, you know, I mean, they have books too, but uh, right. So this this is another this is another example. He's responding to this poem over here, right? And he used um, text to self mentor, and you're having them go back and also say what they agree disagree with from yes. the AI. Uh huh. So just respond to the what do you think of the answer. Mm -hmm. And from reading, you know, they, 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 they're, I mean, I think it elevates their thought to a different level. And they, uh, you know, they learn from it. Mm -hmm. Jill, I dragged you here too. Do you want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing <laughs> with the 100 word narrative? And we've been doing it in, uh, in Youth Voices, by the way. But, yeah. 100 word narrative. That's interesting. Is Jill still here? Yep, I am still here. Oh, yes, hi. Yes. So okay. um, we joined the New York Times um, 100 word narrative contest. And Paul made, um, Paul, I, I constantly call them thinking partners or templates. That's fine. And yeah. He had taken the 10 winning essays from the 10 winning um, 100 word essays from last year ran them through i'm going to say the wording and you you fix me paul whenever i'm saying it correctly and how to create criteria like what was you know like three criteria that it found based on those three based on the 10 winning essays and so then my kids took their 100 word narratives and they used that thinking partner and it focused in on two sentences just to try to improve like two sentences. And so I had every kid, you know, use that, use the thinking partner. And then they also, I asked them to give me kind of like, um, is it Roland that said, to also give me their thought on the feedback of the AI. Did they like it? Did they not like it? Was it helpful? Um, you know, did they want to use the whole sentence if it was suggested of a sentence? And so what's interesting, you know, for me, I try to make every single, I don't do tests or anything like that in my class. I make sure that every writing piece we have is for an audience other than me. And so I have all these journals where we, we write and they read whatever books that they want and they research about whatever they want. And then we use these four different journals to eventually um, say something, whether it's for the NPR podcast contest, whether it's for the TED Talks. Um, or Stossel in the classroom, someplace that they can get their voice out. So they do, for the most part, the kids found the feedback pretty helpful. They are not as tempted, they said, to steal the actual lines because they spent a lot of time. We spent all September and October writing in our journals about all sorts of things that we were sparked about our lives. But the template gives them examples um, of, of what they could do. It does give side. them examples. And many then did say it gave, you know, the feedback was good about the example, right? And so it did even teach them and develop them as a writer, like, oh, maybe next time I should be a little bit more purpose um, specific or personal. And um, so I think like they were the two overwhelming things that I found in their feedback. And I always talk about, you know, we're going to develop ourselves as writers. So what did it teach you as a writer? You know, did you learn something that you'd want to do to your piece? Did it help you? What was that? And then what did you learn as a writer? Um, and I'm trying to sh get them to think that way. And I think that, you know, if I was to sit down with every kid, I'm always trying to look at their writing and then pose a question to them. And I think AI, ultimately, I want AI to be able to do that. But the two questions, the two sentences that it addressed were helpful. And kids then played around. They played around with trying to have it rewrite it. Um, everybody overwhelmingly said the same thing. When it rewrites it, it takes out all of the voice. It becomes robotic. 
it's not personal anymore. Um, but a couple of things it found that it often wanted to, I'm always teaching them to use, you know, the powerful one word sentence or the one sentence paragraph. So sometimes it wanted to collapse things into organized paragraphs. But again, I think that would be like a template where we'd have to teach it about like writerly moves and, and craft a little bit more. But I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated a little bit, I think kind of what like Chris said, where can it help my students, not on their specific pieces, but I keep thinking of it, how is it going to help them develop as writers? So every time it looks at a piece that they wrote and it suggests things, what are they going to put back in their writer's toolbox or in their writer's head and say, oh, gosh, you know, maybe I don't do that on this piece, but next time I got to remember I should do this or I should do that. Cool, cool. I'm, I'm going to sit back and just hear questions and thoughts at this point. Jill, just you, you were the prompt that you were using the, the, um, the learning partner was all the students were working with the same one, meaning distill two key sub sentences out of the text that they're putting in. Is that I, the, I made them use that one first. And then because I was familiar with Paul's uh, thinking partners or, you know, templates from last year, I, I showed them, you know, there's lots of them here fiddle yeah. around with the different ones that you might want. And um, then a chunk of them definitely did that. And some did try to throw okay. it just into a uh, chat GBT just to see what happens. Like I said, they, they spent a month and a half writing in their journals and probably had, you know, 20 different pieces. So at this point, this piece was very personal when they, when they finally used AI. And so, um, but I do found, I found one of the things that is, I'm constantly asking for them to be specific, to be personal, um, to be emotional in your writing, to be raw and honest. And some of the kids even said, this is what Jill says <laughs> to me. So it, it is like having m more than one of me, which I want. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you made me think of something. I want to ask if you or anybody else has done this. I mean, you, Jill, you were mentioning this business of style and craft, like a one word paragraph or, you know, a question being a way to move the thinking through a set of, 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 of paragraphs or so forth. Has anybody actually worked out a prompt that includes that in the response characteristics of the thinking partner. Um, I'm getting way down in the weeds here, but it, you know, we hear about summarization and extracting semantic tone and other things, but a very directed sentence construction that you're talking about, Jill, which is very rhetoric and very power, rhetoric and very powerful. Has anyone done that kind of thing and worked with the tool to get it to respond with something that's specific? I'm curious. Feel, that sort of feels like very extracurricular work for people who are trying to deal with a classroom. So perhaps I've answered what, my What do you question. want it to do again? Say, say again, you want well, it to... I, I, was, I was thinking about what Jill was putting out there, which was it would be really interesting to see if the AI could have a structured way to provide feedback to a student that says, hey, that, that speaks specifically to a certain stylistic construction mm -hmm. that can be very powerful in the right moment. And for example, the single word paragraph. Like there's a lot of scaffolding that would go towards setting up that as a as a potential direction for an AI and for a student. And um, there's no end to the number of craft directions one could go with uh, in terms of prompts and so forth, but it would suggest a smarter and smarter writing coach or, or, right. or feedback coach if, if we knew thinking, that those things were there. I keep thinking what NCTE asks and what I think you know, as part of people are here are on National Writing Project, I'm always trying to just cultivate a writer. So I don't ever think about, I never even talk about my, we don't write argumentative or formative. I don't ever try to yeah. silo my writing that way. I say we write for a purpose and for an audience. And so right. I want something that's going to really help them think about their writerly moves that they make. Mm -hmm. Who's yeah. the audience? What's the purpose? And I would love something that could help them you know, look at their pieces and keep thinking about that. Like, you know, who's your audience? What are you trying to do? What's your intention? And then it, it would actually give feedback on that. And Jill, 
do, do when you when you do that pre AI, would you mark or annotate a digital version of of your students' writing and with inject your feedback into the physical space where the, their words were, or how how would you give your feedback with if you didn't have AI to help you? Um, well, I always are just I'm sitting with them in like a conference usually. Okay. I don't often write it down for them because I want to make sure that they hear it and understand it. And because I try to make sure every piece has a true audience, I'll it's often in questions like, you know, I'll say something to them like, boy, I'm reading your piece about um, drunk food and I know you're going to, you know, interview that woman in uh, Colorado on the nude foods thing, you know, and then we'll have a conversation about that. Always thinking about the piece, like who's the audience and what would be the power, you know, what do we have to do with this piece based on the audience and based on the purpose? It's so interesting to try to unpack that model of feedback and figure out well what would a, what would a virtual partner what yes. would it look like to try to do that. They'd have to know the student really well. Well, that's you know this is really to get into it. One of my passions in my research is about I hope we're going to change the portfolio of products for students. So i'm wondering where it can help my students so it can help them when we get to certain things and we did use it even last year paul and i used it when the kids wrote their ted talks and we were able to throw things in like what else should i be thinking about you know when you got to read chunks of our ted talk and the script what else should i be thinking about um i'm i wanted to be able to stretch but i don't know if it can replace me or my writing circle groups where it asks the kids questions and says, you know, hey, Rob, you mentioned your grandfather in there, but I'm wondering if it's also, you know, yeah. because the pieces are all so, every piece that I have my students write, every, you know, is like I said, it's an NPR pod, it's a podcast or the script for that or the TED Talk. The TED Talks, we take four or five months to come up with a topic. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they shift and change them as they research and read. But I wonder if we could create a thinking partner that really talked about developing a writer and maybe move off of some of these things that talk about very schooly products. Because I, I, you know, what is the 21st century portfolio mm -hmm. and what would be transferable later on in life? Those are all good goals. I, I, I don't want to, but I also, the Nick, Chris Sloan isn't here anymore, but Chris is really interested in having having the AI give very specific writerly kinds of feedback. So I think there's room for both, but yes. Um, just to say, I, and I, I wanted to mention that Rollin um, had her students do AI with the first novel they read, um, Mango Street, right? And then, and then having to do with this and watching them, and not that you have time to do this, Rollin, but watching the difference between how they use the thinking partners there and then how they use it in their poem and then how they use it in the novel they're reading now. And then thinking about, so they're learning what these things do. And so it's, it's really an interesting thing to watch them do that. Roland, you unmuted. Did you want to say something? Please. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, this is also a journey for me where it's, everything is new. And this is my first year with AI. And um, I'm just learning as much as they are. Cool, cool. I liked what you said at the beginning that AI is something fun, did you say, to play with? <laughs> Yeah, let's keep that up. Um, go ahead, bro. I was just thinking at F R A I, so it's, it's going to be fry for me because <laughs> <laughs> you're so tired. I know. Thank you, thank you for coming by. I and I so totally the the reason I asked um, Rebecca Sklut about um, how to braid stuff in is that. I'm totally fascinated by watching what students do with the thinking partners, working with you all to build them, you know, have these conversations for, so the loops between all of this is, is 
really teaching us how to make this work, I think. Um, the, the, the sort of question or challenge, if you have some time to do it, is try the same question with some thinking partners on now comment and then try it on chat GPT. Let's see if there are differences. Um, a researcher would have to do that kind of carefully, I think, before we would know. Um, but thank you for the challenge on that question. But I, yeah, so we'll get back to it, I hope. Thank you all. Anybody have any other thing to say before Roland Fries? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my friend AI. That's F R A I. Know. I, know. <laughs> I know. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.